Welcome. We're glad to have you here to worship with us this morning. During this time of distancing, when we aren't able to be together and to see each other, I hope you are taking the opportunity to call your friends and check on them. And while you're calling them, you might invite them to join us for worship on Sunday mornings. You can find us on YouTube or on Facebook. So now let us begin our worship service. Hello, I'm Mark with your prelude. Um, since I'm sitting in the sanctuary, I must confess that what got my attention first for this piece was the hymn tune title, which I think is Latin for In Babylon. And I thought, well, aren't we all strangers in a strange land right now? Then I noticed that it's in your hymn book on page 325. If you're not familiar with it, it's four verses of enthusiastic praise for Jesus Christ. The music fits the, the text, so here we go. Love. 
name is Terry, and I welcome you to Time with Young People. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with us today. Have you ever played a game where one person is blindfolded and another tries to guide them around without having them run into anything? How did it feel to be guided? How did it feel to be the trusted guide? It takes trust to let someone guide you when you can't see where you are going, doesn't it? Did you find it hard to trust? Trust is a lot like faith in God. God gives us minds and expects us to use them to make decisions for ourselves and choose directions to go that will be in tune with God's will for our lives. But ultimately, we must have faith that God is with us wherever we go in life. Whether we are doing what God wants, or whether we make poor choices and stray away from God's loving will, we have to have faith that God is with us. There's a story in the Gospel of Matthew where the disciples were out by themselves in a boat when a dangerous storm came up. They were frightened. It was very hard for them to trust that God was with them. It was a situation where it was very difficult to have faith. In our Old Testament reading today, we have Joseph being sold into slavery. Another situation where it was very difficult to have faith. But in each story, we learn that God was with the disciples just as he was with Joseph and he helped them through their difficult and scary times. God is always with us, just as he was with the disciples and with Joseph, and helps us through our difficult and scary times. Let's always work on growing our faith or trust that God is always with us. When we do that, it's easier to share God's great love with others. Practice that trust. Thanks for being here. Hello, I'm Grant Connectal, and reading today from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 through 31. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Then the man asked him, What is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. Hello, I'm Lynn Stapleton. I'll be sharing Pastor Joanne's sermon message today, titled, Wrestling with God. My favorite line from the old Anglican Book of Common Prayer is, From ghosties and ghoulies and three-legged beasties and things that go bump in the night, good Lord, preserve us. It is such a whimsical prayer, but it does reflect a basic unease for the night and the things that go bump or go wrong. You don't have to be a kid to be afraid or nervous about the dark. And then there are nightmares. We never seem to have daymares. But the time you can best see the stars is at night preferably away from the city and pollution, so the stars will virtually pop out at you. There are people that love the night with its slower tempo and the calling of refreshing sleep. And a lot of God's encounters happen at night. The best example 
is our reading for today about Jacob. Now Jacob had had other nighttime encounters or dreams. There was one as he was re running away from Esau. As he falls into a restless sleep that night, he dreams of ladders with angels descending and ascending. We've even got a song that many of us learned as children. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. But here in this dream, it is quite a different encounter. It's not so passive. Many people want to write it off as a dream, but then there is the hip thing to explain. Vigorous tossing and turning in sleep? Dislocating a hip while you sleep? Mm, I just don't see it. In the reading for today, evening and night are portrayed as sacred times for building relationships and receiving blessings from God. It is during the night that Jacob finds himself alone in his thoughts, wrestling with the memories of his past and current deceptions, wondering if he will be able to make amends. Jacob survives an identity-changing transformation, and when the sun rose, a blessed Jacob declares that he has seen God face to face. The psalmist cries out to God through the night and concludes by stating, As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied beholding your likeness. Night is portrayed as a sacred space of both hardship and joy in the scriptures. This encounter Jacob has that night is scary, painful, and yet blessed. And through the night, he becomes a different person. Jacob, the heel catcher, as you may remember, he emerged from the womb holding on to his brother's Esau's heel, always gets what he wants. He wanted his brother Esau's birthright. He wanted his father Isaac's blessing. And he wanted his cousin Rachel's hand in marriage, just to name a few. And he got them all, but at a cost. The cost of tricking Esau out of his birthright and blessing was having to flee from his fratricidal brother. In order to marry Rachel, Jacob had to work for 14 years and marry Rachel's sister, Leah, as well. Now, after upsetting his uncle and father-in-law, Jacob is prompted by God to return to his ancestral lands from where he fled many years ago. This is not a joyous homecoming. Jacob is afraid his brother will attack. So he divides his wealth of livestock and servants before sending peace offerings ahead of him. It is not yet known how Esau will respond to his brother's return. Wrestling with a supernatural power at a bridge or a crossing is an archetype similar to fairy tales and folklores about trolls and supernatural creatures under bridges. Often in these stories, the encounter happens at night and some sort of price or sacrifice is required for safe passing. What will be the cost for Jacob? Is it significant that this story takes place at a river, a symbol of crossing? Notice the wordplay between Jacob's name and the river Jabcock. In Hebrew, both names sound very similar when said out loud. It is also important to note the description of the person whom Jacob wrestles is vague, although it appears to be clearly male. Perhaps this is a hint that the important part of the story is not who or what the man is, but that Jacob wrestles. Jacob wrestles all night and in the morning he has a new name and a new beginning. Many things are left unknown in this passage and we do know is that what we do know is that Jacob at some point became convinced that whomever he was wrestling could provide a blessing. 
Jacob wanted to receive this blessing regardless of the physical cost. Why did Jacob want a blessing so badly? Perhaps Jacob is seeking a blessing of healing and reconciliation. Perhaps he no longer wishes to be the heel snatcher and is looking for a fresh start. Eventually, before dawn, a blessing is granted, represented by his new name. The name is ambiguous. It can be understood as the one who struggles with God or God struggles. Either way, Jacob, Israel, is rewarded for not giving up. We can probably relate to this story. There is a price to be paid for past misdeeds, whether the price is self-inflicted or seems divinely given. Anguish and anxiety are connected with returning home and some struggles must be faced alone. Yet perseverance is rewarded even if we do not receive the answers we seek. When have we struggled with God and had sleepless nights? How have they left us? Is it okay to argue with God and make demands of God? This story can help us look at these questions in a new light. Many times when we can't sleep, it's because our minds are racing at a million miles an hour and we can't stop thinking about something that, that is what happened that day, what might happen tomorrow, or things that we have done in our lives that continue to bother us. In those times when we feel most alone. But this story helps us to see that we are not alone. There is nowhere we can go that God is not there. It is precisely in these times of nighttime turmoil that we need to turn to God even if we do so reluctantly because we don't want to face God with all that is running through our minds. This is the wrestling, yes, wrestling with God, which I believe Jacob did. We may not be physically wrestling, but we are in a struggle for our very lives and God is there helping us. And if we will let God transforming us through the struggle, this change comes out of the deep and abiding and unconditional love God has for us. There is nothing we can do to make God love us any less. We may hurt God, we may disappoint God, but God will never stop loving us even if we feel unlovable. This is the wounded part of us that God needs to touch and maybe knock that feeling out of joint so it doesn't fit into our identity anymore. And at the end of our wrestling with God for our soul identity, our very real identity, our understanding of ourselves, we come out in the morning with a new identity and a new name, one we can truly name and claim for ourselves, beloved of God. It's not that we didn't have the identity from our birth, but now we truly understand that it applies to us in the very core of our being. So in those nights when sleep eludes us, when we feel we are in great turmoil and struggle and we feel like we are wrestling with ourselves, know that the person with whom we are wrestling is our God, who will struggle with us to help us see our way forward, who will struggle with us until we can come out with the realization deep in the very fiber of our being that we are beloved of God, of infinite value, love beyond measure, and that this love is available to all. Listen for the whisper in your heart, tis love, tis love, and realize that the morning has come and you are truly home, home in the very bosom of God. Almighty God, in a world of change, you place eternity in our hearts and gave us power to discern good from evil. Grant us sincerity that we may persistently seek the things that endure, refusing those which perish. 
and that amid things vanishing and deceptive, we may see the truth steadily, follow the light faithfully, and grow ever richer in that love, which is the life of all people, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Postlude time. Today's is by Strauss. It's from his Thousand and One Nights Waltzes collection. This is number two. That seems to imply perhaps genies and such. To me, it feels more like we're at the Olympics uh, ice skating with all that beautiful, cool ice. So enjoy. I would like to share this Native American blessing. May you have the strength of eagle's wings, the faith and courage to fly to new heights, and the wisdom of the universe to carry you there. Amen.